Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the first US-built Airbus takes flight, a new inverted flat spin record makes us dizzy, the UK CAA takes another look at airshow fees. I'm Brie Cross, it's March 22nd, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. We have reported a number of times about first flights of a new model of Airbus airliner. In this report, however, this story is not about the aircraft, it's about where it was produced. This first flight of the first Airbus aircraft produced in the U.S. Airbus manufacturing facility. The A321 destined for JetBlue Airlines took off from the Mobile Aeroplex in Mobile, Alabama, performed its test sequences, and landed about three and a half hours later after tests were performed on systems, engines, and structure performance. Daryl Taylor, Vice President and General Manager of the Airbus U.S. Manufacturing Facility, said in part, quote, We've come to an exciting milestone in the production of any aircraft, but this one is particularly special. Together we are fulfilling the promise we made to the city of Mobile, the state of Alabama, and to the Gulf Coast region. We're creating a new center of commercial aircraft production in the U.S. This is just the first of many aircraft to come. All pilots know that inverted flat spins are something to be avoided at all costs, unless you're air show performer Spencer Sutterman and you're out to break your own inverted flat spin record. Now Sutterman has done it again after a number of attempts to beat his own 2014 spin record of 81 inverted rotations. He obliterated the former record by completing an unofficial 98 inverted auto rotations in a Dan Ryan modified Pitts S1X. Starting over the Yuma International Airport, Sutterman climbed to 24,600 feet in the normally aspirated pits before rolling inverted and starting the spin sequence. The aircraft used for this attempt is an experimental variant of the legendary Pitts Special Aerobatic Biplane. The plane, designated the Sunbird S1X, is the only one of its kind, featuring an oversized engine and propeller. His achievement will be officially submitted to the Guinness Book of World Records, and only time will tell if he gets to retire the cup. After the break, the UK CAA softens its stance on airshow fees. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Several air shows in the United Kingdom have been put on hold because of new costs being charged by the UK Civil Aviation Authority as a result of the accident occurring at the Shoreham Air Show in August of last year. In the UK, the CAA is not funded by the taxpayer, and therefore they say that charges for investigating the accident and creating new safety procedures must be met by the industry. The charges are showing up as fees being applied to airshow promoters, and that has caused airshows to just close their doors. In an attempt to work with the airshow community, the CAA has now decided to phase in the introduction of the new airshow event charges. The 2016-2017 charges will now be set to recover $145,000 of the expected $290,000 of additional costs, with the remaining $145,000 being absorbed by the CAA. They also said that they would work with the airshows that are being produced for charitable causes. It's not the perfect solution, but it's better than putting UK airshows out of business. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. We feature air shows from the East Coast to the West Coast, and this one is really out west. Running March 25th through the 27th is the Warbirds over Wanaka International Air Show, being held in Wanaka, New Zealand. This is a major event that features both land and water-based aircraft, and this year they will be featuring a Spitfire and a version of the Meiser Schmidt 109 in the same place at the same time. The military and civilian air show is expected to be great, and they are also featuring sport aviation aircraft. March 25th through the 27th marks the Mooney Spring Training Fly-In being held in Glendale, Arizona. It looks like they're combining aviation training with one heck of a good time, with tours of the Goodyear Airport airliner storage and maintenance area, and a chance to watch two major league baseball teams in practice. 
With tours, good food, and a bunch of Mooniacs in the same place at the same time, it's bound to be fun. If you've ever been interested in the world of powered parachutes, check out the 15th Annual Clinic for the Wisconsin Powered Parachute Association on March 26. It's being held at one of our favorite places, the EAA Air Venture Museum at EAA's headquarters in Oshkosh. The event is free and open to the public. Speaker topics include the latest news from EAA and the FAA FAST team, WPPA member experiences, introduction to powered paragliding, various breakout sessions, and more. After these messages, helping pilots return to the cockpit after an accident. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A group is being formed to help pilot survivors of accidents recover the confidence and ability to return to the cockpit. The organization calls itself Back to the Cockpit and is being started by pilots who have experienced serious accidents. The Air Force Association has announced the 10 national finalist teams that will compete in its Stellar Explorers II National High School Space Competition in Colorado Springs next month. This is a one-of-a-kind program aimed at inspiring students towards STEM studies. A Memorandum of Understanding has been signed between Global Vector Helicor and Aero Group to jointly develop helicopter emergency medical services for the Indian market. Aero will bring their expertise in modern, diverse fleet of helicopters to introduce helicopter emergency services in India. NASA has named former astronaut Janet Cavandi, director of the agency's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. As director, she will lead the center that has more than 3,200 civil service and contractor employees and an annual budget of approximately $580 million. Duncan Aviation has been granted base maintenance authorization on Embraer Legacy 450 and 500 aircraft. This authorization allows Duncan Aviation to offer full maintenance support and service for all scheduled maintenance events on these aircraft models. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Last week, we reported that the Avidyne Corporation had developed a wireless connection with the ForeFlight app and that they were also working with other developers to expand their wireless connection capabilities. Now, Avidyne and Flight Plan have announced wireless integration between the Flight Plan Go application and Avidyne's IFD 540 and IFD 440 GPS navigation and communication systems. The Flight Plan Go Aviation Flight Planning and Mapping application is the mobile version of the popular online aviation resource FlightPlan.com. Flight Plan Go running on an iPad, Android tablet, and Windows 10 tablet can wirelessly display GPS position and flight plan information from the Avidyne IFD 540 or IFD 440 running the current 10.1 or later software. Many additional capabilities will be added in a future IFD software release for the IFD 540-440. We'll keep you posted when Avidyne creates wireless connections for other aviation app programs. Here's a heads up for those of you flying off or around the coast of South Carolina on March 30th and 31st. The FAA has released a notice that GPS testing has been scheduled and GPS navigation interruptions are expected. The interruption with GPS navigation will be more extended at higher altitudes with a circle of 293 nautical miles at flight level 400, decreasing to a radius of 67 miles near ground level. The FAA says that NOTAMs may change with little or no notice. Pilots are advised to check NOTAMs frequently for possible changes prior to operations in the area. NOTAMs will be published at least 24 hours in advance of any GPS testing. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage 
of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.